Mach ich es am Deutsch oder am Englisch? Ja, gut. Deutsch, das würde ja verrückt. Ich bin nicht so gut in Deutsch. Mache ich es oder nicht? Versuchst? Okay, dann dauert das vielleicht ein bisschen lange oder es gibt andere Probleme. Gut, ich kann. Gatekeepers. Ähm, na, ich mache. Ähm, okay, ich werde es versuchen. So, etwas wie Gatekeepers, das geht vielleicht über. Mh, okay. Sind wir schon angeschaltet oder nicht? Ja. Ja. Es geht über äh, Grenzkontrolle vielleicht. Und die sind ganz gut mit Grenzkont Grenzkontrolle. Ähm, zum Beispiel hier, ähm, die Deutsche, na, die Deutsche, die Amerikaner, die möchten gerne einen großen Wall, äh, Mauer bauen äh, zwischen Mexiko und Amerika. Ähm, wir haben es mit äh, den äh, Leuten in, in Vereinigtes Königreich. Ähm, die hätten gerne einen Brexit. Ciao. Ähm, und die Deutschen haben auch eine ganz gute Lösung dafür, so wie die äh, heißt es in Eisern? Wie heißt es? Eisern. Vorhau, ja. Aber ein ganz gutes Ding. Ähm, die Mauer haben wir geschlecht äh, abgebrochen. Aber ja, es gibt auch ganz alte Mauern, wie diese, die größten Mauern von China. Ähm, China? Nein. China, okay. <lacht> äh, gut, das war ein bisschen ein Intro äh, von meinem Vorlag, Vortrag und das bin ich. Blabla bla, Info, äh, gut, äh, das bin ich. Theo von Huschel, äh, mein Sepan. Ich arbeite heute sagen, beim Perceptix und von gestern haben Sie sich vielleicht äh, erinnert, da waren wir, um das Event zu sponsern für die Getränke. Äh, und ich denke an jedem Mal, äh, Pearl und Getränken geht immer gut. Wir haben, ich glaube, die Pearl, ihr Fans nicht für den Pearl, aber für den Bier. Äh, immerhin. Äh, ja, wir, äh, wir, wir haben das We Hire Thing. Äh, gut. Gatekeeper. So, ich möchte, ich gehe doch im Englisch. Es gibt zu viele, meine, meine Notizen sind in Englisch. Also, okay. <lacht> Gut, Englisch. So, um, let's think about this very bad example um, for various reasons, but just pretend that we want to do a post request to a server and we have a transaction endpoint there and when we post something with an account user UUID and an amount of money we want to transfer, great. Bad example, for very good reasons, very bad. So in general, if you have such a request that will come into your system, You will try to receive it and you will then try to understand what's happening. You try to execute what's happening. Then finally, you may try to archive it and everything is okay. You will try to respond to it. But all these steps, things can go wrong. And we'd like to build in some kind of security. And for one big reason, feeling safe is one thing. And the fear from anxiety is something else for us as developers. Um, and we don't want it. We'd like to feel the security. We, we'd like to have a program that will do what we think it should do. <clears throat> and for a lot of things, we like to check the data. And checking is also about sanity. It's like, all right, looks this okay? A lot of people think, yeah, that looks like a phone number. Fine. We'll come back to that later. Consistency of your data. Um, That's always the same thing uh, that you thought it has. And the integrity as well. So many things you can read up about what you want to do with your data that gets into your application. Anyway, so what do we do? Well, I know what we do. And this is what we do. We write tests. And we get paranoia. And we think, you know what? Tests, yes, or... Test more. And luckily we have a module that says test most. And test most has a nice thing that's called test exception. Well, it's a separate module, but it is included. And test exception, what does it for you? Well, you have a 
opportunity that you can test that whatever you do in this specific piece of code, that it works okay. But what if you throw in something bad in this function, in this subroutine, and you put in some bad arguments to your parameters? Well, you have this thing, it dies. And you can test that actually if I do something wrong with my software, that my subroutine refuses to execute it. Very good. But I have been in situations that you try to throw in something bad and it dies, your subroutine, for a totally different reason. And do you think, yo, I had a very good test, but it's not. So luckily, you have throws okay, that when you throw in a, when you pass in a bad parameter, you actually have a test somewhere in your subroutine that says, yep, no, 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 that specific thing is wrong. This is the error I get. That's very good. So, what we do, we test most, and yeah, that's very good. Then, this is the other thing. Well, further on in our application, you will end up with your data access layers, and that's going to throw up very quickly. What do I mean? Is that the moment we try to store our data into a database, we try to fix your data into some specific slots in your data access stuff. And there is something we have for it. That's called SQL. SQL can deal with it. SQL have these nice things like Fargar, try to throw in something silly, uh, it will barf. If you have said this is a int, try to pass in a character string of whatever things, it will blow up and say, no, I'm not gonna do it. Luckily, SQL has these nice things like you can add constraints, make it more intelligent. But yeah, anyways, what will happen with our very bad example at an archive level, it will say, no, not going to do it. And probably what will end up, if you would deal with an HTTP request, you'll probably send back a 500 internal server error because somewhere deep inside, something blew up. So what we do, we have these things, we get uh, the data layer constraints and that will work. Another thing I'd like to talk about is that, yeah, data object validation. And what do I mean with data object validation? It's like you have ordered with a specific supplier some goods and you want to make sure that these goods that you get are actually exactly what you ordered. You make measurements like, all right, these specifications are, this is what I expected. And we have a nice thing for object orientation programming. Um, and it has attributes and you can do a marvelous thing with attributes. So quickly to Moose, Moose has, how do you create this thing? It's like, oh, you have an attribute and you can make checks on your attributes. Like, are these actually the things you want to have? We do that with an ISA and you can put there a nice subroutine that will deal with your things you pass in. Oh yes, this might look like a number. We have special subroutines that say, looks like them. Ah, it's difficult. Luckily, most neutral type constraints is there, and so you can do a simple thing. is a number. This is readable code and easy to maintain. And we also have, of course, any, which is very nice. And yes, that's for people that do not really know what to do with type constraints at that level. And for the people that are really not knowing what to do, it's just, oh, whatever, man, I can't deal with it. And it's super complicated. Moo, one of the other nice object oriented frameworks we have. Now with Moo, we have one problem. It's super fast, it's lightweight, but it doesn't have any type checks. So what do you do? Yeah, we borrow from our big brother. So can we have your types? It's a silly ID. Anyways, what will happen during execution time if you try to create an object that doesn't match Still, you will have a 500 error deep downside. Hmm. So at least we do now have attribute type checking. That's nice. That's good. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about type tiny. Type tiny is compatible with Moo and with Moose, and it has a very interesting features there. And actually, with type tiny, well, we all know 
Perl has a few types, and we all say, well, Perl is not really a typed language, and you can only do it for so few things. Doesn't really work with Perl. Well, you do have a, a thing that's called lexical type tiny. You can actually say my int dollar n, and it will start making errors whenever you pass in something bad. Not totally the way we want to have it with compiled languages, but anyways, it makes your code still more clear. Type tiny is wonderful. So we have attribute type checking. Back to a little step back. We had this database access stuff that was going wrong. We had our classes, our objects. And I think DBX class is a nice bridge that will try to combine both things, make sure that whatever we try to push into your database is saying we have the, our objects created by Perl. They're saying as well, combine them. DBX class, great. Um, but still way too late. We're talking about gatekeepers. I would like to do parameter checking in our subroutines. So I'd like to talk about this guy. This guy is a great guy. Um, but if you are not following the dress code, you will not get in. It will just say, don't know, like, get out. <laughs> so these bouncers are very big guys and try to get beyond them. It's a very difficult thing if you're not liking him or he, he doesn't like you. So I'd like to talk about things we try to do to make sure that whatever we pass into our para, uh, uh, into our subroutines are the right things. So I know what you do. I've seen your code. So what the first thing you do if you have your subroutine is shift or shift more and well, let's do another uh, shift. And maybe you have this thing that, yeah, you know what? It doesn't pass my things I tried to do there and I will die here with hopefully the same error message. So you can actually do that throw okay. But it's not nice, but it works. And that's what how we do. A very common thing when you're lazy and you do not understand all the features we have. And we are just lazy, yeah. So one nice thing, because I like type tiny, is type tiny signatures. Type tiny signatures, you can use that. And we don't like uh, the Perl 5 signatures we have. It goes a little bit further. You can now actually say we have type tiny signatures and import some type tiny types. And we have a method. And that method will say we need to have a string with a name and a social security number that needs to be a number. By the way, method will also give you self in these cases. Very nice. Um, good. This how it works. It's one way to check your functions and your subroutines as long as you are having positional parameters. Params validate, however, works for named parameters. You can pass in a hash or a list of values. However, the author already said, don't use it. Go for param validation compiler. It's faster. It's more complicated as well. And I mean, with complicated, it's like, this is what you will get. You have your parameter validation compiler. You have to import validation for. Then you have your uh, thing that solves, I have params here. And which three I have is foo, bar, and bas. And foo is having this type int thing. And probably bar is then saying it's a type of string. And it's optional. Yes, I can read that. And yes, bas is just called saying full type int. And it's a default 42. Wow, I've done my definition here of my validator. And then later on, you will call your subroutine cux and then say validator for all your params you pass in. And it will unpack your thing and it will do all the magic for you. Great. But a very confusing syntax. Type params, however, from the same guy that wrote type tiny, Oh, back to them, sorry. Um, he wrote a module that will do the validation for you. Uh, it will probably look like this. So you use type params, and then inside you can just use your compile name thing. And I think this reads way more easy. Foo must be an end, bar is a string, and it might be an optional. Bus is an end, and that has a default of 42. Way easier to read. 
than if previous one. Mm, okay, anyways, after you have checked this thing, you may end up now with a error at a way earlier level, rather than executing with your DBX class and you're creating your objects where it's already too late, you now can actually say, ah, I understand what you try to do here, but I'm not going to do it because of errors. And then you can maybe say, well, this was a bad request. And I say, this is a kind of uh, parameter checking, I will call it bouncing. Because most of the time, it will just give you uh, an error and say, that's wrong. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, you, and um, at Perceptics, we were trying to do the new <laughs> modern things. We are hiring a lot of people. So we're trying to use signatures. And we're trying to use type tiny now. Um, and then you will end up with all kinds of interesting discussions. And one of the discussions is about this guy here. And you will very annoyed if you try to get to password control and the guy says, mm, yeah, no, your date of birth seems not to be right back. And you start to fill in a new, that's how you build your forms, by the way. Most people say, okay, date of birth. You fill in your date of birth. Try to send your thing. Mm, no, that's not the date of birth. All right, correct. Correct your name, uh, correct your phone number, and then try to send off. And then it will say, oh, wrong postcode. Oh, great. And it goes on and on and back and forth and back and forth between you, the front end, and the back end. Luckily, there are better ways to do it, but it needs some effort. So if this guy would do it that way, you would be super annoyed trying to get through to customs. So back to our transfer money thing. I said there's a lot of things wrong. Somebody already told me that you can't do a post and then have query prompts. Well, you can, but you shouldn't, probably. Uh, anyways, account UUID expects me, at least, that it would be a UUID and not a ABC thing. And your amount has a comma in between it and, yeah, should not pass either. But it would be very annoying if you would come back every time. Oh, correct this, correct that. So, validate tiny is there. Validate tiny, however, has its own syntax. Um, and now I'm missing some things here. Oh, uh, now probably it's so annoying big syntax and so annoying complicated that I even didn't want to do it. It has its own coercions, it has its own filters, it has its own checks. Nothing type tiny compliant. Me being me, I start thinking. Um, and I was already in love with type tiny. I did like type tiny type params, but I didn't like it that it will go for the fast solution to this is wrong, bye. I want to have all the errors reported. So you know what? Type params validation comes to the rescue. It's still on alpha, you can find it on GitHub yet. I didn't have the time to make my first push to CPAN yet. Um, alpha, it's more or less type params drop-in replacement. It will give you the same kind of errors, it will throw an error, like type params. Uh, this one, this is what you usually get, you will get a error type tiny. Uh, now you will get a type tiny validation, type tiny validation errors will actually have a method called errors, and your errors will give you all the list of everything that goes wrong. So you may have a constraint that goes wrong, wrong type, this is what you usually would get from type tiny. And I added the ones like missing params and the ones that will say an unrecognized param. So at this moment, if you would go back to this transfer money thing, it now tries to understand what you're doing and it will give you all the errors. It will be one step further and say, create me the correct JSON structure that I will need for proper reporting with JSON libraries there are out there. Um, someone said, oh, maybe you should actually now report a 422 error. Um, I'm not sure if that will be really the correct one, but maybe it is. Um, so now from what we do, instead of doing the bouncing, we are going to now do reporting. And I hope, by the way, that in the meantime, 
you're no longer writing all these tests, but try to rely on what you have written in your code. I have been asked previously, you know, Theo, what are you doing? That was years ago when I just started with Perl and DBX Plus. Theo, why are you trying to write these tests? Are you try trying to check that DBIC is doing his thing while you're trying to write an integration test? With proper modules, like I hope this one, type tiny, right? type params validation, you will stop writing all your tests yourself and start relying on, yes, this module is trustworthy software. I can rely on the fact if I write in my source code, this must be an int. I do not have to write it in my test anymore. And I hope that will help. So, no questions? Good. Any questions? Good. Nothing like that. You're boring. <laughs> All right. Anyways, thank you very much for listening. Um, and I hope to have some nice beers with you if you're still interested in getting a new job working from home. Work with the septics with great people. Have a beer with me. Yep. Thank you very much.